Here's how to replace droopy door hinges on a Toyota Sienna. Now the root cause of the problem is due to these bushings here. They're supposed to be pressed into the pin over here, but they're just dangling really loose. And that allows the pin to move back and forth when I wiggle the door. Similarly, there's a little bit of play in the lower hinge as well. And the result of that is the driver's door can't close properly. It just grazes against the latch and you pretty much have to pick it up in order to line this up and then push it in. Now in order to get to the door hinges on this vehicle, of course we're going to have to loosen the door, but we're also going to need to remove the fender. To remove the fender, we're going to have to loosen the headlight, but to loosen the headlight, we're going to have to loosen the front bumper. And to loosen the front bumper, we're going to have to loosen the inner fender liner. So we're going to start under the hood by removing these two 10mm bolts that hold the headlight on. And then we have this front fascia here that we're going to remove next. It's just held on by pop clips. We disconnect these by popping them up with a screwdriver and removing them. Next up, we're going to remove these two clips over here and over here, as well as these 10 millimeter bolts along the perimeter of the fender liner. To remove this clip, I'm just going to rotate this until it clicks, and then pick it out with a screwdriver, and then I can push this clip away from the bumper itself to separate the splash guard. There's one more 10 millimeter bolt that you can get out with a deep socket behind the mud flap. Okay, so with the splash guard disconnected, I can just reach in behind here and pull the bumper away from the fender. And that should give me a little bit of room here to get access to these bolts. So if we sneak in behind the bumper here, you can see that there's two 10 millimeter bolts that we need to remove here and over here. And that'll free the fender from the body. So I got my 10 millimeter ratchet in there. I'm gonna loosen this bolt up and then loosen this bolt up. There. So with those two removed, I also found that that last one there also needs to be removed. Now up inside of the fender, we have two more 10 millimeter bolts to remove. Now underneath this rubber guard here, I'm going to just pick that up. There is another hidden bolt over here that we need to remove. Now next to the headlight here where the bumper is, I'm just going to pull this back. And I'm going to remove one more 10 millimeter bolt that is holding the headlight on to the rad support. All right, so with all the headlight bolts disconnected, I'm just gonna use my brother's toothbrush here and pry it up on the headlight. And I can free it from the fender and sort of just move it off to the side. So it's free there. And then there's a 10 millimeter bolt just above the upper door hinge. Next up, I'm just gonna reach in and pry off this triangle here. Just held on by clips. And that reveals the last 10 millimeter bolt holding this fender on. So with all the bolts loose, I'm going to remove the fender. Now one note about these fasteners here is that this fastener plugs into the splash guard and the fender itself. And even once you remove this screw here, you still can't get it out normally because it's got these two tabs on it over here. So you actually have to go from the back, squeeze on the tabs, and then force it out that way if you want to reuse this piece. So with the fender out of the way, we can clearly see the top hinge for the door. We have two 12 millimeter bolts going into the body, and then two 12 millimeter bolts going into the door. Now, as long as we leave the door latched closed, we can actually change this top hinge here without affecting anything else. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen up this 12 millimeter bolt. <clears throat> And then this 12 mil bolt. Then I'm going to come in and loosen up. What the hell? This one's already loose. Whoa. This one's super loose. I wonder if it worked its way loose. There's one bolt. There's the other bolt. This is the door bolt. Notice how it has a little shank on it there. And there's the top bolt. Again, very similar to the lower bolt. And this here has a little bit of sealant on it. So I'm just going to use a flat screwdriver here to pry this off of the body. There we go, and that's the top hinge. So this here is the old top hinge. You can see how much play this thing has when I wiggle it back and forth. And it's really loose and floppy. And if you look inside of here, you can see what used to be bushings that actually used to fill the gap in between the pin here and the housing. And they've just dropped out and they're really old and crumbly. It's not like you can just push them back in or replace them. You can see how old that is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace this hinge with a known good one. And this here is my replacement hinge. You can see that it's just much stiffer and there's no play in the hinge and the bushings are already installed there. So we're just gonna go ahead and replace this on the vehicle. All right, so I'm just gonna line up that hinge there. Put my 12 millimeter bolt in. And then we're gonna replace the 12 mil bolt in the door. Now once all of the bolts have been caught, I'm just gonna 
go ahead and snug them down. So here we are at the lower hinge. Just gonna use my 12 millimeter ratchet and remove this bolt here. And then I can also reach in and grab the door bolts. Again, same like the top. It has a little taper on it. Now in order to get this inner bolt out, I'm just gonna use a 12 millimeter wrench and break that free. A ratcheting wrench definitely helps here. And with all the bolts free, I'm just going to break this free from this sealant and remove the old hinge. Now similar to the top, you can see that this bushing here has been pretty mangled up and it's starting to come out of the pin and that's what's causing it to have so much play. And this here is the replacement door hinge. It's a lot tighter than the existing one with very little axial play. I'm just cleaning off this sealant here. So we're just going to install the new hinge and put that bolt in. Then I'm going to catch the bottom bolt and then catch the top hinge bolt and then I'm going to catch the inner bolt here and I have to remove this one because my wrench can't fit there first. So we'll just run this bolt down and then we'll just run this one down and then we'll give this one a final tighten. This one's got to be tightened kind of awkwardly with a wrench. <coughs> tighten these down nice and snug. So before I put together the front end I'm just going to open the door and close it a couple of times and I can already tell that this close is much smoother than the old hinge. I'm also going to make sure that it lines up with all the body panels and I can also check to make sure there's no free play. In this case there's absolutely nothing that I can feel in the hinges. I can definitely tell this fender has been repainted. You can see the blue paint just peeling right off the inside of the fender liner. So next up we're going to replace the fender. I'm just going to push the headlight back a little bit and then mount the fender onto the body. And then I can start replacing the 10 millimeter screws and replace the 10 millimeter bolts on the top side here. So with the fender tacked down, I'm just going to position the headlight inside of the fender here and line up the two bolt holes. And then I can replace all three 10 millimeter bolts. Next we're gonna cache the three bolts at the edge of the bumper and the fender and tighten those down. One more bolt above the upper hinge. All right, so before we tie down the fender on this side, I'm just gonna go ahead and tuck the splash guard up inside of the wheel well all the way around here. And then I can tie the splash guard to the fender by using the insert. And then I can bring in the mud guard and line that up to its installation hole. And then catch that 10 millimeter bolt. And then we can catch the last 10 millimeter bolt for the fender along the pinch weld. All right, next up we're going to put this splash guard in around the bumper here. Push the bumper in and then tuck this splash guard in and around so that these holes here line up. And then I'm going to insert this clip into the bumper here and then rotate it 90 degrees so that it's locked and then I can replace the fender screws I'm going to replace this cover it just pops right on next up I'm going to replace these top clips above the radiator support and now you can see with the fender replaced and the new hinges that the body line between the door and the fender is nice and consistent all the way down and it's not drooping anymore with a big gap up at the top finally we're going to test the door to make sure everything opens and closes nice and smooth